Riders, welcome back to Sam's Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and this is your e-bike news fix. And today we're looking at eight brand new electric mountain bikes released in the last week and a half, and also why I think Shimano could be in a little bit of trouble in the e-bike space, and why has Pivot stopped their brand new shuttle LT with the old Gen 4 Bosch motor, not the new Gen 5. Do they know something we don't know? Let's check it out. And number one, hot off the press, is the brand new Merida E180, which is rolling on mullet wheels, 180 of travel up front and in the rear, Bosch Gen 5 motor, an 800 watt hour battery, available in five sizes, and weight coming in around 27 kilos, and prices starting from a very respectable 5,000 euros. Riders, I didn't see this one coming um, because Merida just released the E160 a few months ago, which is actually 170, 174 travel. So very similar to the E180, 180, 180. The big difference is Merida's gone Bosch for the first time in e-bikes. You know, the E160 has been a classic e-bike for a long time. It's always been Shimano. So this is the first time we're seeing Bosch, which is a big change. And also the other big thing is the weight. Coming in at 27 kilos, it's a little heavy. And number two, another Merida, the brand new E160 SL, which is rolling on 29 wheels, 160 up front and 160 in the rear. The Bosch SX motor with 55 Nm of torque and 600 watts of peak power if you bring that cadence up. Got a 400 watt hour battery. You can also get a 250 watt hour range extender. Available in five sizes and weight starting from 19.7 kilos and prices from 6,399 euros. So this is Merida's first SL and it looks fantastic. 160, 160 rolling on 29ers with the Bosch SX motor, which I have been testing. I'm a big fan of this motor. It definitely if you're a fit rider, you can play with full powered e-bikes. You can definitely ride with them. Loving the Army Green. Overall, great looking bike from Merida. Number three, the Mondraker Crafty. Rolling on 29 wheels, 160 up front and 150 in the rear. Bosch Gen 5 motor, 800 watt hour battery. Available in five sizes and weight starting from 24.4 kilos and prices from 7,199 euros. Now, Mondraker have been very busy this year. They've released quite a few e-bikes. I was expecting to see a new Crafty. I did test the XR a couple of years ago. Great bike. So the new Crafty's got a new, completely new frame, new suspension layout, and also in the five sizes, we do have specific size chainstay, which I love. Also, great paint jobs. The designers at Mondraker are absolutely killing it with their color schemes this year. Overall, great looking bike, could be a little bit on the heavy side. Number four, the Pivot Shuttle LT. Rolling on mullet wheels, 170 up front and 160 in the rear. Bosch Gen 4 race motor with a 750 watt hour battery. Available in four sizes, weight starting from 22.3 kilos and prices starting from 9,000 euros. This bike looks amazing, just like all the Pivot e-bikes do. I'm a big fan of Pivot bikes. Yes, they are a little bit expensive, but they are like a high boutique brand. I am very interested to know why Pivot have stocked this beast with the Bosch Gen 4 race motor, not the new Gen 5. I do have a few ideas we'll get to at the end of the video, but overall, another fantastic e-bike by Pivot. Number five, the Rocky Mountain Instinct Powerplate SL. Rolling on 29 wheels, 150 up front, 145 of travel in the rear. We've got a brand new Dynam S4 light motor with 65 Nm of torque and a whopping 550 watts of peak power. Super interesting motor. We've got a battery, 480 watt hour. You can also get a range extender, 315 watt hours. Available in five sizes, weight not available, but I'm guessing it's coming in around 18 to 20 kilos. And prices from 5,500 euros. I'm loving the look of the new SL from Rocky. I actually have a bit of a sweet spot for all Rocky bikes. I really like the brand. And also riders, the legend at Rocky Mountain are sending me out the new Instinct Powerplay SL in the next couple of weeks, and I'm gonna be reviewing it. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And number six, the Kodak Rocket. 
Rolling on mullet wheels, 160 up front, 150 in the rear. Shimano EPA 01 motor. You have a battery choice of 418, 405, or a 630 watt hour. Available in five sizes. Weight coming in from 21 kilos. Uh, starting price, 8,999 pounds. This bike will only be available in the UK at the moment. So right, it still is real. I'm loving the look of this bike. I mean, it is interesting. You've got a bolt-on battery there. You know, are we saying those bolt-on batteries, are they old enough now to be retro? Because this bike is a steel frame. You know, it's got that bolt-on battery. I think it looks pretty cool, and I think it would ride really well. Kodak know how to make bikes. And number seven, moustache game. Rolling on 29 wheels, 170, 160 of suspension, Bosch Gen 5 motor, You're available with a 600 watt hour battery. You can also get the 250 watt hour range extender. Available in four sizes, weight coming in from 24 kilos, and prices starting from 5,399 euros. I'm a fan of the moustache bikes. This one looks good. Um, it's interesting, it's coming with a 600 watt hour battery, and at 24 kilos, it could be on the heavy side. What do you think, riders? And lucky last, number eight, this is not a new bike, but it is a new bike for me, and it's absolutely out of control. Last week on the channel, we built out my custom Kinevo SL park bike slash downhill bike, and riders, check out all this bling. So it's obviously based off Kinevo SL, we got Olin DH38s at the front. We got Olin's coil at the back. We got Magura MT7 brakes painted in the race yellow. We got Industry 9 Grade 300 version two wheels. Clearly the Schwabe Magic Mary radial tires. We got forks, cranks at 155. Sam Hill pedals, rental bar and stem, DMR death grips, specialized Phantom seat, Thompson seat post, and to top it off with some SRAM. XX Eagle T-Type transmission. I think you would agree, it's an absolutely sensational e-bike. I'm so happy I built it. I'm gonna do a little bit of racing next year, a bit of downhill racing. I thought this would be a cool bike to build. I'll probably race it without the battery. I'll probably do a fair bit of riding and training in the bike parks with it. So definitely keep you updated on that. And riders, my thoughts on the bike industry, just to like a little things I've been thinking about. So first up, could Shimano be on the way out? Well, if you look at this, in the last couple of weeks, major brands have been making a shift from Shimano to Bosch. So we're talking Merida, which just released two bikes like this week, and then Santa Cruz is a big one. Santa Cruz entered the e-bike market, I wanna say like four years ago with the Heckler, then the Bullet, and they have been running for the last four years solely Shimano systems. They're moving away from that. The new Valor has gone the Bosch Gen 5. And then Pivot, releasing their new Long Travel, which did have a Shimano EPA 01. Uh, you know, it is interesting that they've gone for the Bosch Gen 4 race, but we'll get to that. So, you know, it seems like a lot of those major brands have moved from Shimano to Bosch. We don't have that many brands left that are just doing Shimano. You know, off the top of my mind, I'm thinking Yeti with the 160E, which is a fantastic e-bike, but it is limited by the 630 watt hour battery. And you know, Shimano don't have a range extender yet. I can see why a lot of these brands are going to Bosch. And now onto Bosch. Now, why do I think Pivot have gone on their new Shuttle LT to the Bosch race motor, the Gen 4, not the Gen 5. Well, at the moment I am testing the Gen 5 and I like it and I think it's a very good system. But I feel it has lost a little bit of its identity or je ne sais quoi of the feeling of the motor. So Gen 4, especially the race, it reminds me of a 125 two-stroke wide open, bah! like it is a fun bike. It's definitely pokey powerful, and you know you're riding a Bosch. On the new Gen 5, like it, it's smoother, it's definitely quieter, it doesn't have a rattle, you know, it's a better design, but it doesn't feel like you're riding a Bosch. It's definitely, 
It likes to be in high cadences. It doesn't, it's not as pokey. Um, you need to be more selective of your gears. I'm not saying the Gen 4 race is better, just saying it's different. And I kind of understand why Pivot have gone that way. Uh, you know, what do you think, riders? Have you tested the Gen 5? And do you know what the, the Bosch race is like? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Anyway, there's just some thoughts that I had that I thought I'd share with you riders. And like always, if you haven't subscribed to Sam's Bikes, please do. It doesn't cost you anything and it really means a lot to us. The more subscribers we have, the better the channel goes, the easier I can get bikes and do reviews. And so it's a win-win for everyone. And like always, stay safe out there and we are gonna see you soon.